This is a project that started nearly five years ago where we were looking at all the controversy in the literature, both in the media and in the scientific literature, about certain risk outcome associations. Started with diet, but there's also a lot of controversy around air pollution and controversy about other associations. And we wanted to find a way to help the public, to help research funders, and to help decision makers in government navigate this sort of very confusing field. There are hundreds of thousands of studies out there that are linking health behaviors like smoking, drinking, air pollution, physical activity to anything related to your health. And there's so much information out there that it's really hard to know how much of the recommendations are evidence-based, Some, how much of it do we know for sure, how much of it maybe we're not really sure. And so we undertook this study to figure out where is the strength of the evidence, how much do we know about all these health behaviors and whether they're good for us or bad for us. We've called it burden of proof because when you look across a range of studies where some studies may show a very strong relationship between a risk and an outcome and some should show some show a weak relationship if you take a burden of proof mindset or a conservative interpretation of the evidence then we're going to look at the weakest of the relationships and say if you take those as the best studies is there still compelling evidence about this risk and outcome? And so it's that mindset around, we need to be convinced that the relationship is actually there. We've summarized the results using a five-star system. And the quality of evidence for a given risk outcome pair can be rated between one and five stars, where five stars is going to be the, the strongest uh, uh, evidence we have. So for example, uh, smoking and lung cancer is a five-star association, and that means that we have really robust evidence of a strong association between the risk and the outcome. So one star means we, we don't really know what's going on. Uh, we don't really have uh, solid evidence here. Five star means you could take it to the bank. Uh, it's very unlikely that future evidence is going to change the assessment in any meaningful way. Our studies have reaffirmed a lot of conventional knowledge on smoking. Like for example, smoking is bad for lung cancer, for cardiovascular outcomes, for a bunch of like other uh, outcomes such as diabetes, COPD, etc. But we do also review uh, some like surprise. So for example, people may think that asthma is uh, correlated with smoking, but after collecting all available evidence and synthesizing the evidence, uh, we did not find such significant relationship between smoking and asthma. So it's a, actually a one-star risk outcome pair. In the study we found that there's a very strong and consistent relationship across uh, high systolic blood pressure and cardiovascular diseases like ischemic heart disease, stroke, and um, smoking, and different types of cancer, like lung cancer. Um, and we also find that there are some weak associations of risk factors like diet or body, high body mass index and Alzheimer um, and thyroid cancer, for instance. In terms of how policymakers or others might use the information, what we are hoping to catalyze here is more research into the areas where we have a lot of unknowns. So the one and the two star pairings are the areas of work where we hope to see a lot more evidence being generated. And on the flip side, we don't really need more information for the pairings that have five stars. We know it without any doubt that those are causally linked. And so it would be better value for our money to invest more research and more scientific effort by the community in those pairings that have one or two stars. If you are somebody that really is risk averse and wants to avoid any possible risk to their health, you'll want to 
avoid the harmful one star and two star risks and embrace the, the, the protective one and two star associations. But if you are somebody that's willing to accept some risk or that there might be risk, then you can take a more nuanced approach to how you view uh, a one star association. Personally, uh, for me as an individual, I'm not going to change my behavior for a one star association. Um, but I'm probably going to act on, on two stars and above. This work is evolving and updated all the time. The volume of scientific evidence that gets produced annually is huge. And we hope to be able to update all of these star rating systems on a regular basis. And as more information becomes available, to incorporate it so we make the latest and most timely evidence available to the public and to decision makers and policy makers.